What's going on everybody? Trajan here. I got my stack of books. First one up is Captain America number 695, which we all know the real reason they made brought back the legacy numbering was because they realized they had a lot of numbers in the 90s and they want to obviously do like the 700 issue is going to be huge. But this is written by Mark Wade. I have very cautious optimism about this book. I really liked it. I really liked it way more than I thought I was going to like it. I was actually really disappointed when I bought it. That, that I bought it. I was like, I can't believe I'm giving Captain America a try. I am so happy I picked it up. I'm so happy. Everybody else is calling it mediocre. I thought it was better than mediocre. I thought it was, I would, I would go so far as to say, very good. It's definitely worth the $3.99 to pick it up. Uh, if this is any, if this one is any indication of what we're going to get out of Mark Wade in this. Because remember, Mark Wade, out of all like their big writers, Dan Slott, Brian Michael Bendis, uh, the other jabroni who I don't like, Nick Spencer. Mark Wade is the one who can turn it on. He's still got it. He's a good storyteller. He, I feel like he's, he, he might be constrained. Whereas everybody else needs to be reeled in and need actual editors. I feel like Mark Wade, ha, like, kind of like, there are certain things that he has to do. And I think that he has to do them, whatever. Anyway, that's, just, that's, that's just me speculating. But it's very good. We start off with uh, kind of like the intro. And then he's fighting white supremacists. Now, listen, I know a lot of people are like, oh, white supremacists. There we go. It's, it's getting political again. Look. If this was the 80s, it would have been Soviets, all right? If it was the uh, early 90s, it would have been cultists, you know? The, the fact that this group was, was a group of white supremacists is just a stand-in for uh, any generic kind of terror group that you, want to, that you want to put in there. If this was the 40s, this would have been the mafia, you know? So it's, it, didn't, it wasn't really, like, that big of a deal to me. Yeah, I know it's... It's so topical. And Mark Wade tends to try to put topical references and everything. Not as bad as Brian Marco Bendis, but he still does it, you know, whatever. Anyway, this is the scene that Diversity in Comics was talking a lot about, about the black girl and the white boy, where he has black girl PTSD. I also have, bla I'm suffering black girl PTSD. If you watch my Super Sons number eight video, you can see me having black girl PTSD. And it turned out all right. Same thing with this, it turned out fine. And I know there was like a big deal about how, uh, where is it? It's right here. She jumped in front of, like, the shield. But look, she's a kid. He gave... The instructions that he gave her were, you have to protect him, okay? She, she was protecting him, and then she saw that he was in trouble, so then she went to protect Captain America. It makes sense from a kid. It's like kind of like when you're like, oh, instructions unclear. I got my stick, my dick stuck in the blender. It's kind of similar to that, where instructions unclear, I, I was defending you also, right? And she's like, she's a child. It's, kind of, it's, it's possible that the kid thought that way. Anyway. And Captain America saved her. He gave her the flag, which is a callback reference later, which I thought was just utterly just dumb. And I don't think it had the impact that they wanted it to have. But this is cool. So you see the, you see the town sign and then the next page. Oh, they renamed the whole city to Captain America. And he's like, what the fuck is this? Anyway, so they're having like a Captain America festival. He shows up and he rolls in. And this is the other thing that Versine Cox is talking about. This, this uh, conspiracy theory guy. And, all right, we get it. You're making a Flat Earther reference. You know, I don't think any, like, this was a six, this is six months ago. Nobody cares about this anymore. But I thought it was cool because it, it kind of shows the mythos of Captain America that he has grown larger than himself, like his name. So I thought that was really cool to see. It was, it was very good development, in my opinion. Anyway, so was, there's some kid nonsense. And this was cool also. They do this a lot in Superman. Where people tell stories about like meeting Superman, so it, it further builds the mythos, and it's I, I like I liked it a lot. You kind of see how Captain America has become an inspiration to these people, and so I hate these scenes. Um, Cap, I, sorry, America Chavez one did it very poorly. I think the Defenders did it also, and I got really mad when the Defenders did it. But so you have like just random people talking about like kind of like why they like Captain America. Uh, you have the, the gay character who needs to be gay, uh, and you need to have one. If you work at Marvel, you need to have a gay character expressing themselves as a gay character in every single book. If you do not, your book will not be published. I gotta, I gotta tell you that, all right? That's the only explanation for the fact that it happens every fucking issue. Like, these are the things that it's not a big deal until you realize that it's every issue. But, whatever, whatever. And then you got the, uh, the Nazi puncher. Oh, what a topical reference, Mark Wade. All right, anyway, and the white supremacist rollback. Remember, the white supremacist gang is just a stand-in for generic, generic homegrown gang, whatever. Anyway, then Cap shows up. 
He throws his shield without his mask on. Is that is that what we're doing? All right, cool. I guess the kids knew that because some kid was like, oh, that's a great Steve Rogers cosplay. What's their obsession with cosplay, though? It's actually starting to piss me off. This is another thing that I've been, I think this, this is a really nice page. But the obsession with cosplaying is so irritating. It's because I think they realize there's a huge cosplay market out there. But they don't realize these cosplayers, they're not part of any fandom. They just really like dressing up. That's really what it comes down to. That's their passion. They like, and a lot of them like, like creating it. They like designing it, and they, 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 make, they make their costumes themselves. Sometimes it's a thrill of the hunt. I used to cosplay. I've, I've done Chris, Chris Redfield was my last one. I haven't, obviously, obviously, I haven't done it in a while, if you, if you can timeline that. But, and the, my favorite part of it was getting all the pieces together and seeing the costume slowly like, build to the final product. But these cosplayers aren't buying the comics, because if they were, you, you wouldn't be in such like, shit right now, basically. Anyway. So, uh, then we have a suicide attack. Are white supremacists known for not, are white supremacists known for suicide attacking? I thought that was an ISIS thing. I know they're big with suicide by cop. I think the statistics are like really like they have like a significant amount of suicide by cops. But suicide, but they're like, kind of like blowing themselves up. Not really. I have no optimism for this book whatsoever. I don't know why I'm not focusing. There we go. So this is cool. this page is cool because it's kind of like he's inspiring everybody. He gives like this really like inspiring speech. And this reminded me a lot of, of what a lot of Superman. And Captain America is basically the the Superman of Marvel, right? I think we can all agree on that. And I know there was like one scene where like Superman was like um, like there was a security guard or a, no, there's a police officer, like an older police officer, and the officer says something like, "Oh, it's a Superman. Oh, we're safe now that you're here." And then the the Superman says something like, "No, we're safe because we're both here." Like, you know, basically they say, no, you're making the place safe. I'm just here to help you. You know what I mean? And it's kind of like the same thing. Obviously, we need the old white lady to be helping out the young black guy. Because reasons. I don't know. And this is another one of those. It doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter. I mean, you got, you got the Hispanic dude saving the white girl. But it's just like, you see it, like, clearly in every issue. You're like, hmm. This is, they, they're putting this in on purpose. Why? It's just bizarre. Anyway. Then you have the callback to the black girl in the beginning. Like I said, it felt really flat. Nobody gave a shit. I didn't give a shit. I thought the coolest scene was actually this and then him driving off into the sunset. But this was supposed to be very inspiring. So be inspired. Are you inspired? Good. Anyway. And then that's it. And then we have, obviously, this. You have the, the Nazi punching, which is always cool. But, you know, whatever. But then and fighting Hydra. So, yeah. So that's it. That's uh, Superman. I'm uh, sorry, that's Captain America. See, I'm already saying Superman. But uh, is it worth the three ninety nine? One thousand percent, it is. I'm very, very optimistic about this run. Cautiously, but still optimistic. I'm actually really looking forward to it. I think Mark Wade could do great things with this. Whether or not he actually does it has yet to be seen. But remember, I was also also cautiously optimistic about Falcon, and that turned out to be a big pile of shit. So I'm giving it one more chance. I'm getting number two on what on. I'm picking it up Friday. But I'm going I'm to be getting number two. And if there's any more Crooklyn nonsense in there, or if they, they feel the urge that they have to reference every, all the black characters that they know for no reason other than because they think black people are reading it, let me tell you something. Black people read Captain America. Black people like Captain America. I know because my comic store is in a black neighborhood. And I see the kids buying, and, and not even the kids, I see people my age who are black buying Captain America. They're not buying Falcon because they feel insulted when they buy Falcon and they have to read this nonsense. Anyway, that's my little rant. Anyway, so that's uh, that's Captain America. That's it. You can uh, you follow me at Trajan Channel on Twitter. Uh, like, share, subscribe, and uh, Captain America looks like he's uh, doing naughty things. <laughs>